Well, hello, welcome to what I hope is the first of a series of videos talking about music. I've been a musician for over 50 years. My name is Steve Sandner. I'm originally from Chicago, and now I live between Arizona and Michigan mostly. And uh, any musician who's been a professional performer as long as I have will probably have some of the same information I'm going to tell you, but I'm going to mix it up with beginning and advanced. I'm going to start with the building blocks of music, the basic notes. Um, the, even if you're a beginner, I hope you'll find something in it, and if you, even if you're advanced, I hope you'll find something in it. Now, a lot of people want to know how to read music, and you might say, well, you can't teach people how to read music without graphics, and that, that to, to a degree that's true, but I'm going to try to at least, um, maybe a little more slowly, but try to start in on it. But I'm going to also base it on the piano keyboard, which I have in front of me. So at a later time, I may add some of the graphics uh, to this video or do another video that's geared more toward the graphics. But for now, we have the notes of the musical scale. Uh, originally, way back in time, there was one note. And let, let me play a note. Uh, that happens to be C. We're starting with middle C. And if you're looking on the piano, you're looking backwards now, but if you look down to the piano forwards, you'll see groups of three and two black notes. And if you go roughly to the center of the piano, not exactly, but roughly, there's two black notes that are paired together. And just to the left of those two black notes is middle C. And that's a great note because it can be sung by almost anybody in any vocal range. And purest musical instrument is the human vocal. So see, ah, it's a little bit high for a man, a little bit low for uh, most women, uh, but it's in there. So anyway, we start with C, and you might want to say, why, why don't we start with A? Well, I don't know. There are some things that I, maybe I don't know the answer to. So we, we start with C, and if, if you've ever seen a piano keyboard, and I imagine a lot of you have, maybe most of you have, uh, there are, of course, white notes and black notes. If you take all the white notes starting at C uh, and go up for the first seven notes, that comprises the basic musical scale in Western music. So the names of the notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then you start over again at A. There's no H. So we're starting on middle C. Then we go to D. start again over at A, A, B, C. Those are the basic building blocks of the musical scale and we'll, we're going to talk about how you go to other keys and things like that later. But um, you can see the notes that I just played were ascending, like you're ascending a staircase, you're going up. So on a piano, if you're facing the piano, you're going to the right. So those notes will be ascending or getting higher. Um, the notes going, starting again at middle C, if you go to the left, or my left, uh, you, you would be going to lower notes. And you can see that if, as you go, if you hear the dip difference in frequency, those are the lower notes. Um, if you're wanting to read music, we will have to, I'll have to do a word graphic here, picture, a visualization of a, say, a sheet of paper. Say it's typewriter size. And let's say we have five horizontal lines. And these lines are from top to bottom about one inch. So every quarter of an inch you'll have a line. And let's say the width from left to right is six inches on this printed page. So it'll, uh, this is these five lines are called the staff in music, these for written music. And the notes are made circularly, cir circular or sometimes oval, and they will go on the lines and the spaces. And um, if you have a note that's in a space, the top and the bottom of the circle or oval will be touching the line on the top and the bottom. So you can see a note is around a quarter of an inch in diameter, roughly. Um, so we have five lines, and then we have four spaces. So that's nine different notes to, to start with. 
and um, they go from bottom to top. They will go from lower to higher notes, lower to ascending notes. So if you have uh, the first note on the bottom of the staff is a D, um, and it's, it's not in a space, it's, it's kind of hanging below the staff with the top of the, of the circle, circular note touching that bottom line. Then you'll have a note right on the line, and that would be E. But I, I for, forgot one important thing. To the very left of this, these five lines, or what's called a staff, you're going to have a indicator, and we're going to start with the treble clef indicator. And that is roughly like a backwards dollar sign that's narrower on the top, roughly. And if, if you look at a printed page of music, um, maybe after this video, or if you have it in front of you right now, you can see that there's a treble clef sign on a piano part. And then you'll also know there's another set of five lines underneath the treble clef with a different sign. We'll talk about that later. But we're just going to talk about the treble clef, which which uh, starts roughly uh, at C or D, D, or actually middle C. We'll talk about that in a minute. So th these notes, um, if we, four spaces, five lines are nine notes. So um, to get, I said the first note below the staff that's touching the line is a D. Now they manufacture another note below the staff with a circle that's not touching the bottom line but it's kind of in space there and they put a line through it that um, bisects the a horizontal line bisects the note and it comes up an eighth of an inch on either side of the note and that's called a ledger line and that's so that we can add middle C below the staff so we start with C. so now we've got ten notes at least that we can start talking about so we're gonna start with the middle C with the ledger line then D E F G a, now you're right in the middle of the staff, the, 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 the space is, is A, and then B is on a line, and then C is the second space from the top. So there, there you have the musical stage, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, and if you can visualize it, you can picture the notes written out that way. So maybe I've succeeded in teaching a small percentage <laughs> how to read notes without having a graphic, I don't know, but anyway, that we're... Um, Talking about the, 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 the notes in the staff and reading music, there uh, we will get ev eventually, uh, and I may have to go to graphics for this, how the, there are vertical lines that go from the top line to the bottom line that are called measures. And uh, it's very mathematical. These measures are um, parsed out so that the, the, the tempo is a constant and equal. And uh, the, the very first uh, time we were going to start with the time signature is four beats per measure and um, one measure uh, will we'll have four beats just a single circle without a stem on it. some notes have stems and we're gonna eventually get it to this but a note without a stem that's just circle circular and uh, clear in, in, in the middle is a whole note whole note in with four beats per measure will get four counts so you can have a whole note, then you filled up the measure. You can't have any more notes than that. You have to go to the next measure. So a whole note would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then we're into the second measure four, of four beats. So um, you have the staff, five lines, treble clef indicating. The treble clef indicates that the notes are going from middle C upwards, ascending, and when you ascend, you go higher. Ah, 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 ah. That's going higher in the in musical language, in uh, in pitch. Also, the frequency is getting higher. Of these notes, if you bring the the um, um, how music is formed, it's, it's it's with vibrations, with frequencies. So C or middle C is 523 roughly cycles per second of a vibration, and um, if you go the A below C, C, if you go count backwards in the alphabet and go to B and then A, that A is 440 cycles per second, and that's been a standard for a tuning system is to have that A 440 cycles per second. 
So we've been working with the piano, but let's say we go to a string instrument and we have a string that's roughly uh, two feet long and let's say it's, it, it plays this A 440 cycles per second. Well, a long time ago, uh, Pythagoras, I believe, has a Pythagorean theorem of music, he takes this string this two feet and he puts it on a, a fretboard like a guitar and goes exactly in the middle of this string and presses down and then plucks the string. The string will vibrate twice as fast according to the laws of physics and music. So this A will, 440 will become 880 beats per second and you have a, I know it's also an A but it's in the next octave. A, a um, a note vibrating twice as fast will be one, exactly one octave above. And on the piano, as far as the, if you just go by the white notes, um, you'll have uh, eight notes. It encompasses eight notes. So oct octo is is uh, has a root word of eight. So that's the, your octave um, vibrating twice as fast. Now you don't have a pure vibration of eight four four hundred forty cycles per second because every musical instrument has a, a little bit of dirtiness in their tone in a good way though um, they're called overtones and some uh, uh, piano tuners will, will be able to hear these overtones and in, in order to help tune the piano you might have seen a, a guitar player play a little few overtones on his strings but the, um, these overtones give the sound its character you have um, over, the octave is one of the overtones, maybe the main overtone. Then you have other overtones of, um, if, if the string is divided into two-thirds or three-fourths, then you're going to get um, the other notes, the, the um, other notes that are in, in synchronicity or closest to being synchronous with the, 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 the bass note. So you have, um, uh, we're, we're, we're going to go back to C now because the C scale is all the white notes from in an octave. So um, let's play the scale one more time to, to get our familiarity here. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, or Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. It's a C scale, there we go. And um, I'm jump ahead a little bit. We have scales, we have intervals, and we have chords. We're definitely going to be talking about intervals at some time, but chords um, will start with a triad, which means three notes. Three notes w will make up a chord. Sometimes they have more than three notes. But if you start on C and play every other white note, and if you're quick, you can name the letter names C, E, and G, that would be a C major chord. It sounds very pretty, harmonious. And if you, um, if you go up to the F, C, D, E, F, and play every other note, F, then remember you go to A, and then the C, which is the octave above the middle C, that would be an F major chord. And then if you go up to the G, above middle C, and you take every other white note, you'll have G, B, and then uh, if you haven't figured it out yet, the next octave has the same notes. D, that's that's the D ab uh, above uh, in the octave above middle C. So G, B, and D, that would be a G major chord. The, the G is the lowest note because it's going to my left for the lower notes. The D is the highest note because to my right are the higher notes. G major chord. So what, if you'll notice, in, on the C scale, if you base the chords on the one, the first note of the scale, the fourth note of the scale, which is F, and the fifth note of the scale, which is G, you'll have major chords. So those are the three main chords that are the building blocks in Western music. Um, we can talk about uh, intervals because um, every um, and eventually we're going to also talk about um, harmony, further examples of 
of harmony, you can have a note with four chords, for instance. If you go one, three, five, and, and you take logic and skip every note and go to the seventh note of the scale, you have a somewhat dissonant sounding chord, which is called a C major seventh. And why is it called a major seventh and not just a seventh? Well, in building music, you, um, you're, you can build a, a triad on each note of the scale, but when you get to the fifth note of the scale, and you have your G triad, G, B, and D, and you add the seventh using only white notes, that is not a major seventh. It is a, it's called a dominant seventh, because that dominant seventh it will lead back to the the root chord or C, and um, the, the G is the is the dominant because it's the second most important chord in in the tri in, the, in the, our structure of triads that are built on the scale. So that's it. when you make it a seventh, it, it feels like it wants to resolve or go back to the root chord. Or if you do it in, in another, um, if you make it in a different order, it sounds a little better. So. Dominant seventh to the root chord. And um, another interesting thing is these four chords, the one, we'll call them the one, four, and the five chord in the in the C in C with all the white notes. It's C, F, and G. C is the one chord, F is the four chord, G is the five chord. Those are the building blocks of blues. So if you're playing uh, blues, uh, you go to the, you're on a one chord or C chord, then you go up to a four chord or F. Then back to the one chord, then you go up to the five chord, the four chord um, right before that you go back to the one chord. Anyway, so um, we're going to definitely have a probably several uh, videos on the blues at some point too. But anyway, these are the basics of music here um, and um, I've tried to give a visual of how to read music. Reading music is only a means to an end. Reading music, the pr printed music, doesn't really mean much to the listener who wants to be entertained or who wants to enjoy the music. You, and um, unless you're a certain type of person, you don't enjoy the music as you're uh, reading, looking at the written music. Maybe if it's if your profession, it might, it might be amusing to you. But uh, the, the written music is a means to an end. If for, in some cultures, like in India, music was passed on through sound only, orally, through the teachers. Um, and the Indian music scale is based on the same um, structure, the same concepts. Um, they use the Pythagorean tuning. There's a, where another, another thing we'll talk about is tuning systems. The Pythagorean tuning is a very pure tuning. If you get the, these um, ratios correct, the C to F and the C to G are going to be very pure sounding intervals. Unfortunately, on a piano, We've had to compromise the tuning. The intervals aren't exactly pure. They're pretty close, but but not exactly pure. Um, but the, the Indian musicians do accept the Pythagorean tuning. They only stay in one key. Say if they start in the key of C, that's where their entire composition stays. And then they're able to use the pure frequencies of the uh, uh, notes m much more purely. And uh, you've also heard said that Indian music has 22 notes in its scale. Well, that's not exactly uh, the best way to put it. Um, they have uh, they have more than the uh, the, the, the seven notes, the seven different notes that we use. Um, they they but they precisely use the overtones concept to 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 use shade, shades of, of the notes that are sort of off from the usual seven notes or even the uh, 12 different notes if you count the black notes they they go beyond that and um, they, they have a, a a very interesting science behind that too how the how the notes affect the listener and how they're uh, 
be able to use these subtle variations in uh, note frequencies to to inst to uh, bring about emotion and uh, expression in their music. It's very fascinating to me, anyway. Um, as you might guess, if you're a vocalist, you don't have to sing the exact frequencies that a piano is tuned to. You can get more of a pure sound to your uh, performance if you want. If you if you have the uh, uh, desire and the knowledge to be able to, to do that, uh, some pop singers are, if if you listen closely, are able to do that more than others. Uh, and especially when at the first time I heard an Indian singer, when I was about 18 years old, I was amazed at the the ex exactness of the pitch. Was uh, usually they were using this t uh, tuning that I had, I had never before experienced. The, this, this particular singer happened to be a good one, and uh, was singing so precisely in tune it was um, <laughs> it was um, uh, it was different to, to hear that. Um, anyway, that's a good start in the, in the basics of music of the C scale. Re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, the chords, C, then you go to the four, fourth note of the scale, F, triad, and the G triad, and then you can play the blues. So have fun working with this. We'll do more soon. Thank you for watching this.